Hi, this is Brett with Piano Aha. And in this video, we want to talk about yet another way of figuring out what major key you're dealing with given a certain number of sharps or flats. Now, for this method, you neither need a mnemonic, nor the circle of fifths, nor your ear. The only thing you really need to understand is the difference between a whole step and a half step. So again, a whole tone step is what we have if you play two notes that are next to each other that still have one key in between, and a half tone step is when they have no key in between them. So this would be a half tone step, another half tone step, and this, for example, would be a whole tone step since there's a key between them. Okay, so let's say we were dealing with a piece. We have the sheet music in front of us and it has four sharps and we want to figure out what key we're dealing with. Well, if we didn't have any of those sharps, of course, we would just be dealing with white keys. But if we add each of those sharps, and luckily they always come in the same order, then we have an F sharp instead of an F, a C sharp instead of a C, a G sharp instead of a G, and a D sharp instead of a D. So we have these keys, and we want to figure out what is the key we're dealing with. The trick is the following. We want to play three keys in the left hand, four keys in the right hand, and we want only to have whole tone steps in each hand. So if we look at what we have now, that's not the case. I have a half tone step here. So we haven't found the answer yet. So now we'll just move up a key. So in other words, every single finger just goes to the finger above it where it was. Now we look at that. Again, three keys in the left hand, four in the right hand. And again, we see we have a half tone step here, so that's not what we wanted. Now we move up one more, and we see now that indeed in the left hand we have only whole tone steps. In the right hand we also have only whole tone steps. So we must be dealing with the lowest note that we're playing right here, E. So this was E major. Let's do another example. Let's maybe do one with flats. So let's say we have five flats. And again, the notes that we would be dealing with if we had no flats would be all of the seven white keys. But since we have the five flats, we can add them in turn since they are luckily always appearing in the same order. So one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five flats. So these are the piano keys we're dealing with. And again, we look. Does the left hand only have whole steps? No, it doesn't. It has a half step. Okay, so that's not the answer yet. We move up one. And we see now the left hand really does only have whole tone steps. And the right hand also only has whole tone steps. So we must be dealing with D flat. This was D flat major. Now, what we've actually done now is just find a shortcut for memorizing what is often used as the way to remember a major scale, which is that you have to have a whole tone, and then a whole tone, and then a half tone, and then a whole tone, and then a whole tone, and then another whole tone, and then a half tone. And a shorter way, as I said, of remembering this is just that the first three are all separated by whole tones, and the last four, before the scale repeats, are separated by whole tones as well. So you see that even without a mnemonic, or a circle of fifths, or using your ear, you can still figure out what key you're dealing with simply by knowing the difference between a whole tone and a half tone. Be that as it may, this is of course not the fastest method that you could ever think of since it involves trial and error and going to the piano and looking at the intervals and etc. So it's good to also have a different method that's faster if those fail, or if you forget something that you think you thought you knew, then you can always find the answer with this method here. So thank you for watching this video, and happy ahas.